end up moved to New York to take care of Aki and Jeannie yeah. for a little while. And then, what did you do? Get another apartment when you moved back? When I moved back, uh, it was very difficult to get apartments. So I bought a brownstone on 65th Street between uh, Lexington and 3rd Avenue. Do you remember how much you paid for it? I paid 27000 for it. What do you think it's worth now? $400,000 or $500,000. Aren't you, don't you wish you held on to it? <laughs> and what happened? Did Mom and Jeannie move back to Cleveland? Well, uh, when I was, uh, when I went back to New York with Mary uh, and got the apartment, got the house, I was living at the Ambassador until I got the house, Ambassador Hotel, which is no longer there. And uh, luckily, I I found the place. A friend of of, of mine, uh, a cousin of mine, who was friendly with a lady who handled houses, was the one that got uh, told me about it, and she was. She was an architect and an interior designer, so that uh, when we got the house, I wanted to change a lot of things in the house, and she said, you live in this house first for a couple of years before you do anything. It was uh, a three, a four-story brownstone. It had a basement, a first, uh, a basement, uh, a first floor, a lower floor, a low, a low floor level, where the dining room and kitchen were. Then you went up the stairs to the uh, living room and parlor, and then you went up the stairs to two bedrooms, and then finally the top floor, which was uh, a bedroom, and that was it. Sounds wonderful. Well, it was it was it was fun, and luckily, the decorating was very, relatively simple because I had Roemer Brooks in Cleveland, and they had specialized in uh, Parisian paper and furniture and everything else. But most of the furniture I took from uh, things that were in Fairmont Boulevard and bought whatever we needed. And then, uh, and then was Mom and still New York, or by then was she moved back to Cleveland? No, no, Carrie and Edna and Jeannie lived in New York until it was uh, Jeannie's second year, I think, at camp. And when she came home, I went to the station to meet her and told her that she was now living with us, with me. Mom and but Edna was still staying in New York. And, and were you married again by then? Yeah, I was. I was married to Mary. Okay. And uh, so she came and lived with us. And Mary had a daughter, Suzanne, who I still hear from. Is Mary still alive? No. She died some years ago. But uh, long after we were divorced. I'm just, what was her last name? I yeah, I don't know. I know very little about her. Her her name, her maiden name, was Ashford Ashford, and her married name was Dickinson. So it was her second marriage for you too. Yeah, for her too. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was another piece of history that's uh, long been forgotten. I'm sure. How long were you married for? Five years. So that was, a, yeah, it was short. What? Very short marriage. Yeah. But she was a very attractive woman, and uh, I'll show you the album, the pictures that I have with her, and, and the naval station. Okay. Um, so then Mom moved in with you and Mary, and you lived? And we, we lived, and, and then I had when I had, was looking for the uh, house or apartment, 
I met a man who was a member of the Harmony Club, which I was a member of, and he had a beautiful apartment building on Park Avenue and also on 53rd uh, Street. Uh, Park Avenue was an old building and large rooms. The 53rd Street apartment was a beautiful apartment, eight rooms. And one day, after I sold the house, I told him I was looking for a place to live. And he says, I have an apartment for you. And I'll give it to you because you were in the Navy and you deserve every consideration. $163 a month rent. And we stayed in that apartment until the property was sold to Seagram's. And that's the property where the Seagram's building is now built on Park Avenue. So you you were living there with Mary and Jeannie for a few years. Yeah, and then I kept it. I lived there for two and a half years after I was divorced and married uh, Nan. We and, lived there. And you were um, working for Joseph and Feist still. Yes. So what year was what year were you married to Nan? Fifty three, and uh, in fifty five. I, I left Joseph and Feist and went to uh, El Greifenberg. Do you remember why you left Joseph and Feist? Yes, it was a long, it was a long story, and I, I was the victim. It's too, it, it, it's not a, that interesting to go into. I was the victim, and took the rap for Felix Mayer. What business went bad? They blamed it on you. No, what happened was that during the war we were so successful, and then after the war we were very successful. When I went to Joseph and Feist in 1936, they had working capital of $200,000. When I left, they had working capital of $8,300,000. And uh, he made it. Uh, some very bad purchases which I had nothing to do with because he was in Mexico on a trip and during the first world during the second world war we were now in the Korean world war and he thought that we were going to have some sort of restrictions on production of fabrics in the states and he loaded up on this Mexican goods and it just died so you went to Greif you went to Greif Okay. And then at that point, I guess mom was already out of high school in oh, Michigan and when, when I when, when we when we uh when I got married to uh Nan, uh Jeannie was uh, back in Cleveland and at uh, Michigan. And she was no longer she was no longer living in New York. She would come to visit, but she was no longer uh, living there. Okay, and she was wasn't she living at Fairmont Boulevard for a while too? Or yes, she did. She lived at Fairmont Boulevard. She lived with uh, Mill and Dave and Joni for a while because I think I know that Carrie had not moved back, but Edna had moved back, of course, many years before. Edna was in New York when I was married to Mary, but not to, to Nan. And uh, she uh, she moved back and and uh, lived at Mills, stayed at Mills, and, but uh, spent a lot of time with Edna. Yeah, I think that's how her really strong friendship started with Joni, maybe. Yeah, they were they were the same age. So you after you, so once you joined Gripe, that's when you moved to Baltimore. We moved to Baltimore in 1955. And you've lived in this building ever since? And we were on Ford's Lane from, uh, and, uh, from 55 to 61. And then we bought the building we're in now, where we, we hope to stay for the rest of our lives. <laughs> How long did you date, I'm just going to jump back a little bit, how long did you date Carrie? You, you had known her for years, right? Oh, yes. And when did you decide that? Well, we were in Europe in 1929, and 
1930 we were dating and 31 we decided that we were going to get married. Was she real healthy then though? She, she wasn't having that well, many she was, problems? She was, she was ha I, as far as I knew, she was uh, okay. But you knew she had some problems earlier in her I life? I knew that she had, uh, but, but that was peanuts compared to what uh, developed what, into it. Sure. What about um, her sister, Virginia? Virginia. Did you visit was with her ever? No, she was at school. And, and at Bancroft? Hackensack, New Jersey. Right. And I would try to visit her there. I would get there once in a while. Always kept in touch with her. Now, the, as I recall, you have some, vi some, some movies of your wedding to Carrie, right? Right. And that was pretty unusual back then, wasn't it, to have that film? Well, we had a, we had the movie. We uh, my father bought a moving uh, moving uh, uh, a picture camera. Uh, I it wasn't an Eastman. It was another. I think it was a Pathé or some such name. And uh, we took uh, eighteen hundred put a film in Europe and there was a man in Cleveland who specialized in cameras and film and he was known to the family and he put together the equipment for Europe and, and came out and took pictures at our way. Do you remember what the wedding ceremony was like? When you married Carrie? Oh yeah, it was a very beautiful ceremony. Rabbi Silver, senior Abigail Silver, and, and his wife Virginia were there, and the whole family were there, and I had uh, my friends and the boys and girls, who was friends your, of Carrie's too. Who was your best man, David? Dave. Dave Skull. My remember, brother. -in -law. Do you remember who uh, Carrie's maid of honor was? I, I think it was Marie, ha Marie Hayes Heiner. Yeah, that was her cousin. She was afraid of hurting people, and I was afraid of hurting people. And so we had the two. Two relatives and close friends. Our, our relatives and close friends, right. Now, Virginia, now as I recall, there were, in the wedding video, there was her sister attended the wedding. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember what you wore to the wedding? I wore a full dress. Okay. Were you nervous at all? No. Do you remember any of the wedding gifts that you got? Well, they were wonderful at the wedding. We got from uh, Grandpa Feist, we got the dining room set, and our, our wedding gifts were beautiful. All the family in those days sent gorgeous gifts, and uh, I, I, we had one room in the house on, on Roman Road with tables in it with all the gifts on it. It was tremendous. Do you still have any of the gifts? Oh, yes. Uh, I know that Carrie has a lot more than I have because I didn't take anything when we were divorced. Where did you go on your honeymoon, do you remember? Yes, we went to Europe on the Bering area. We went to Paris. We stayed at the Bristol on Rue St. Honoré. And we were gone about 10 days. And that was a bit, I mean, in Paris for a week in Paris, a week on the ship going, a week on the ship coming back. Sounds like a nice honeymoon. It was a gorgeous honeymoon. Describe yourselves as newlyweds. How did you act? Well, we were very happy and content. And uh, we were very close friends with Carolyn and Joe Farber, who had been married in 1929, and Alan Blau. and a few others that were, I was the first of my group to get married. 
where where did you live when you first got married? Uh, when we first got married, we we took a a, a house in Gates in uh, Chagrin Falls. Do you remember the address or the street? No, I don't. But I remember the house. It was a beautiful house. We. $150 a month rent. I wonder if it's still there. Well, we, we lived in it, and then we, we spent the summer there, and then we took a house in uh, on Drummond Road. I mean on... Uh, Fernway? Fern, Fernway, yeah. Was it Fernway? Yeah, Fernway. You, you don't remember the address, though, do you? No, but it's... Because uh, we drive by that all the time. It's beautiful. It's the third house from the east end of the street. It's a brick, colonial brick house. Okay. And uh, it was, it had uh, three bedrooms. It had a, a, a living room and dining room, kitchen on the first floor. And there were either two or three bedrooms, three bedrooms there were on the, on the second floor. And it had cup quarters on the third floor. And we were lucky. We had a, a couple and times were so bad, a cook and, a, and her husband that lived in the house, and we paid them $35 a month. And they were happy as they could be. And that's a pretty small house to have all those people living in there. Well, they, were, they ate in the kitchen, we ate in the dining room. Sure. And uh, they would go upstairs to their room, and we would stay on the second floor. And Jeannie was a little girl. We had a nurse for her. What kind of car did you drive then? LaSalle. LaSalle Touring, uh, LaSalle touring car. With a a, winch, with a a windshield and a uh, I forget what they called them in those days. Over the back seat. It was wonderful. He would sit in the back seat with the top down and the windshield up, and you wouldn't feel any breeze blowing on you. How did the future look to you at that time? I was very excited about the future. I was at the Escorat Company, and uh, I was trying to do what I could, but we were in a terrible depression, the worst that our country has ever seen. And there were a lot of fatalities, businesses going out, the closing up, and uh, but we survived. And uh, in 1934, when Pop passed away, we uh, he had left a letter to me to sell the business. I think I told you this in my last. And that was the end of the Escorat Company. We were one of the oldest companies formed in 1896. <coughs> and uh, my dad was very successful. I'll tell you an interesting <coughs> sideline to it. In 1907, the year I was born, in 1908, He was making the company, Escorat Company earned seventy-five to eighty thousand dollars a year, which was big money in those days. And and we were living on Seventy Third Street with all the help that we had and all the comforts, except for the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and then business grew a lot from that. Oh. From those days, it went went wild. Of course, I told you that the pop was known as a skirt king, and when skirts went out of style, then they went into uh, dresses, suits, and dresses. Well, this might be a good point to break. It's twenty to one. I turn it off. Can okay. you turn it off? Well, do you want to talk for anything else yeah. come to mind? No, I wanted to ask you a few questions. Here, go ahead. We can keep it on for a minute. We're, go ahead. No, I was going to say, what I, I was thinking this morning, there could be more interesting subjects as 
to talk about as far as the family. I haven't told you anything about Mill's wedding. Okay, why don't we talk about Mill's wedding then? Uh, I told you that we moved from Fair, from 73rd to Fairmont Boulevard. Right. In 19, uh, 18 or 19, it, it took a long time to build the house because the war was on. And uh, the house, when Pop uh, told me one day to build the house and the property cost $108,000. Was, that was, by today's figures, that would be a lot of money. We sold the house when Mill and Dave went to Chicago. It was their house. My mother had traded houses with them and given the Deming and Drive house to Helene and Alfred when they came back from California. And uh, uh, Dave was president of the stock exchange and that was moved to Chicago and that's why they went to Chicago. And what year was that? That was in 1952, I believe. And you sold the house for, they sold the house for how much around? Around uh, 40 something? No, 55,000 I think it was. And we sold everything that we wanted to sell in the house for 25000 the furniture. And uh, the house was sold in, 19, I think it was last year, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. In 1990 for 275000 So it was probably worth more when you built it than it is today, which is kind of one of the strange things, because it's... No, it's worth like, more today than... Uh, well, not really, relatively, though. If it cost over 100000 to build it in 1919, that would be, you know, close to a million dollars in today's... Movie. Oh, yeah, that, you're right. And when you think about... Well, I don't think it was that high. It would be that high, but it would certainly be in the three-quarters of a million. Yeah, sure. And the appreciated value, it just didn't appreciate, like, maybe the, your New York properties did. So tell me about Aunt Mill's wedding, then. Well, Aunt, Aunt Mill was a first one naturally. She was the oldest in the family, the first to get married. And she was 18 years old when she was married. And Dave Skull was 20. And uh, August 14th. What year? 1923. And then in, I, in September, Mill became 19 and Dave and became, it was, uh, had a 21st birthday in October. And that, that, that was a wonderful wedding, I mean a wonderful marriage, and they had a beautiful wedding. It was at the old, at the Excelsior Club in Cleveland, and there, there must have been a, well over a hundred people, including my parents' friends and Mills, Mills' friends and Dave's friends. He had I think 18 ushers, and they all, many of them came from out of town. And Mill had uh, her share of bridesmaids. I think Lucille was her, uh, Dobby Grease was her maid of honor. And our family from, uh, several of our family from New York came, Uncle Berti, and uh, who was my mother's oldest brother. And uh, it, it was a, a, a beautiful occasion. I'm sure Nobody it was. Nobody ever forgot it. I'm sure it was. What about when Aunt Pet met, married Alfred? When Aunt Pet married Alfred, uh, it was in 1934. And it was in it was before Christmas, uh, December, and uh, we had the. Uh, they didn't. They, they, there was no really. The Excelsior Club was gone, and we were not going to have that large. They we were not going to have that large a wedding, so we had it on Fairmont Boulevard, and it was on the third floor in the ballroom. 
and it was beautiful. And there were maybe 50 people there. Uh, all of my parents, close friends, and their bridge, and some of the members, uh, fam our family members, between the Stoddards and the Koraks, and, and uh, Helene and Alfred's friends, and that was about it. And they went on their honeymoon to uh, one of the islands, I believe it was Nassau at that time. I'm going to ask you a question, and I think we should wrap this up soon because it is getting late. What about when Mom was born? Do you remember that day when Jeannie was born? I remember it like it was yesterday. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that, and then we'll end it on that because that's a good Well, uh, I gave you the letter that Eddie Joseph wrote to me, or wrote to Mom when, when she was born, which is very cute. I was at the factory, and, we were, and Nan and and uh, Carrie was told that she would, that Jeannie would be a cesarean baby, and they picked uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. I think it was a Tuesday. I'm not sure, Tuesday or Wednesday. And of course, the baby was born, and she was beautiful. Right, what hospital, Mount Sinai? No, it was in the, uh, prior to Mount Sinai's new building on 105th Street. Okay. She was born, I can't remember the hospital. That's all right. You'll have to ask her. And uh, there was a lot of excitement everybody calling in, and all the family, and our family, and the Feist family, and the Hayes family, and... And you named her after Carrie's father, right? Yeah, Eugene, Eugene Hayes. He was one of the greatest man I ever met. Many way, in many ways, like my father, a good businessman. And they had a very successful business. What business was he in, Appy? Kenny. And uh, he was up in years, but was still active, would go to the office every day, mm -hmm. and he uh, turned the business over to Bob Hayes. Sure. He was a wonderful man. I remember meeting him. Yeah. And, and they eventually, Bob eventually sold the business and went in the investment business with McDonald and company. Okay. I had very successful for, uh, relations. Dave, Dave Skull, when he went to Chicago, he was there just a few weeks, and he was invited to be a partner at A.G. Be AG Be Becker and Company, one of the finest investment banking firms in the West. And they were, they had the Federated Account, Federated Department of Stores, okay. and many others, and it was, uh, Remarkably successful business. Good. Well, let's let's wrap it up. Right. Okay. So, we'll talk again soon. Press the button. Press the button. I'm, it's back on. We, we can shake my hand so you can. Thank uh, you for oh, spending yeah. the time to do it. Doing this. Don't worry. Enjoy it. it.